good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. You guys are all right. Um, first thing I want to tell you so you don't have any false expectations, Patrick and I are not speakers. We're businessmen. So if we're not as entertaining as we'd like to be, please forgive us. Um, I just wanted to give you some insight into <coughs> how big box retail works, how Walmart is unique in that group, and how Walmart's entrance into the market changes the retail landscape no matter where they go. Also, how small business can coexist with a Walmart, which is a, an interesting proposition. Patrick will cover that. Um, we will have time for Q&A at the end. However, I'd like to keep this as informal as possible. If there's something that you need to ask as I'm going on, I won't be offended if you, if you raise your hand and we'll see if we can't get an answer for you. Uh, as you've been told, my uh, retail background is from Kmart. And uh, Walmart, some years ago, was not much different from Kmart. As a matter of fact, it had similar origins. And they came from something called a five and 10 cent store. Anybody have any idea what that is? Yeah, that's right. Some people are nodding, other people aren't. Uh, well, anyway, five and dime, five and ten cent store was a uh, uh, a general purpose store. It uh, carried uh, uh, low price items and uh, did a lot of volume. Usually an inner city na uh, neighborhood kind of store. Uh, Sam Walton had one in Bentonville, Arkansas. It's still there today. I honestly can't tell you if it runs or if it's just a museum. Um, in the 70s and 80s, Walmart was nothing more than a blip on the retail radar screen. They were growing, though, and they were growing fast. Uh, at that point, Kmart was in the driver's seat, the largest uh, discount retailer in America, and very complacent. Um, now, obviously, uh, Walmart is the uh, largest retailer right now in the world, with 106 <coughs> million employees. Uh, let me just ask, any of you folks ever worked for Walmart? No hands? Shoppers, Walmart shoppers. See? <laughs> Very good, that's fine. That's fine. Would you say you shop at Walmart a lot? <coughs> who, who shops at Walmart twice a month? Yeah. You're like the rest of America. It's true. Uh, and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. You're saving it now. That's good. It's scaring that. Hell out of some other retailers. <laughs> um, Walmart's philosophy is the public wants low prices over all else. That's what the public wants. Walmart has got their theory down that. Their business model is that. <coughs> and so they continue to press their suppliers for cost concessions so that they can keep giving you lower prices. Now, if you think they're doing this and uh, suffering in the uh, area of profit margin, they're not. If they lower the price of this portfolio 2%, that means that they've gotten a 2% concession from their supplier this year. Their margin remains the same. Um, and I can tell you that the 2% rule is more fact than fiction. Uh, as the buyers from the Walmart Corporation calls suppliers representatives into Bentonville, Arkansas, they will say, I know that we carried your portfolios last year, and I know your portfolios, the cost price to us, Walmart, was a dollar and a half, but now we're going to ask you to give us a 2% reduction in your cost. Now, if you want to stop and think for a second, I don't know of anybody's business that is costing less to run this year than it did last year. Nonetheless, Walmart is asking for a 2%, and that's a standard number, 2% less in cost this year than last year, unless you can prove to Walmart buyers that you've improved the product. Now, if you're successful in that, then perhaps you can keep your cost price the same. So, what happens over time? In order to keep your prices low, the suppliers are going to have to find out how to cut costs. Now, it sounds like a pretty good idea if, if you're a consumer, but if you're uh, a manufacturer, not, maybe not so much. Your, 
quality is forced to be compromised, perhaps the metal. I'm going to use my favorite example, the $29 DVD player, I guess. Uh, what should a DVD player cost? What would be a fair price? Anybody give me a fair price for a DVD player? Think about it for a second. I say $79, $99 is what I'm saying. I mean, there's a certain amount of technology in there. There's moving parts. You want it to last a reasonable amount of time. Well, no, there are $29 DVD players out there. And the reason that there are $29 DVD players is because each year, Walmart, I'm going to pick on Walmart right now because that's the topic of conversation, uh, asks for cost concessions each year after year after year. And how does the manufacturer keep up with that? They use thinner metal, more plastic parts, uh, perhaps uh, quality checks, uh, maybe one quality check instead of four times on the line like they might have been done before. Then you take Kmart. What does Kmart do? Kmart looks at Walmart and says, my God, they got $29 DVD players. We have to have that too. So you've got Kmart demanding less quality and more uh, uh, cost <coughs> Target will do the same thing. They all watch each other. So what we're doing here, we're in, a, in kind of a slippery slide, and we're going down uh, to low prices, but at the expense of quality. And it's really not Walmart to blame. And it's really not the Walmart at Target. It's us, who we just don't know it. We demand the lowest price, but we don't think about quality. Uh, the impact of the Walmart Supercenter on a small town First of all, it's a new store. People are going to go. They go to see what it's about. Uh, it has an immediate effect on other retailers. Uh, their sales turn off like a faucet. You know. uh, if it's a super center, that will affect grocery stores as well as retail stores, regular retail stores. It will also affect pharmacies, opticians, auto parts, auto repair, and even hair salons. So the impact of a Walmart Supercenter coming into a small town is far reaching. Uh, so then what happens to these retailers, the ones that are already in place? But what's going to happen to them is that the lowest performers are going to be forced out. It's sort of a natural selection kind of thing. Uh, the ones that are dirty, that have high prices, they're not customer friendly, uh, they're going to go. They're going to be the ones that are going to be vulnerable. They're going to be, they're going to be able to keep up. Businesses, small businesses that continue to improve their business, improve their customer service, improve their product offerings, they're going to be all right. They really will, even with a long run. You're going to, they're going to be scared to death, but they're going to be all right. They do it correctly. Uh, a, super, a super Walmart comes in, your infrastructure is going to be uh, impacted roads, water, sewer, all of that, because they are a huge operation. They take up a lot of ground, and they use a lot of utilities, and create a lot of traffic. Is there an upside? Well, yeah, there's an upside. Uh, when you have a Walmart come to your town, uh, you have an increase in sale, uh, tax, sales tax revenue. Sales tax revenue. I told you I wasn't a speaker. Sure. Um, also, property tax revenue can be realized. Uh, more shoppers are attracted to the area. These small shops that, that uh, are able to coexist will have more traffic going past their door. Uh, and yes, Walmart does contribute to 